Hi, my name is Stephanie Semino, and I will be doing a podcast on the global wealth gap. The wealth gap can be defined as the unequal distribution of assets. It is also commonly called wealth inequality, and all wealth includes the value of your homes, automobiles, personal valuables, businesses, savings, and investments. To start out, we are going to begin by looking at a few graphs uh, to show the actual magnitude of the wealth gap that many people may not be aware of. So if you look to the right, you can see that 0.7% of the population actually controls 45.9% of wealth in the world, um, as opposed to the far left, which shows that only 70.1% of the population actually controls just 2.7% of the wealth of the world. The second graph uh, just shows the percentage of world millionaires by country. So if you look on the right, you can see that the United States actually has 43 point, uh, 43% of all of the millionaires in the world, followed by United Kingdom, which is just at 7%. To put in perspective um, what's going on in just the United States, um, if we look to the right, we can see that 41% of American families actually have the retirement savings equivalent of just the top 100 CEOs. Now, this might not sound that bad, but if you put into perspective that there are 325 million plus people in the United States, 41% um, of that is slightly under 150 million people as opposed to just 100 CEOs. So there's obviously a very large gap in wealth in this country. A commonly used factor in determining wealth inequality is the Gini coefficient, uh, which is simply an index measuring income inequality. So with a zero, um, that would mean that you have perfect equality, which there is currently no examples of that in the world, and 100 indicating perfect inequality. Um, we look over to the right to see current highest um, Gini coefficients, number one being Lesotho, which is a country that is uh, within South Africa, which happens to be number two, uh, followed by number three, which is the Feder Federated States of Micronesia, followed by Haiti and Botswana. Um, and then we get down, just to put into perspective, for us, uh, the United States is actually number 41 with a Gini coefficient of 45. And currently, the best Gini coefficient that we have in the world is actually in Finland with a Gini coefficient of 21.5. This next graph shows um, the top 10 billionaires versus world gross domestic product um, in 2016. So what this is showing is that the world's 10 richest billionaires, um, their wealth actually is greater than the total goods and services that most nations produce on an annual basis. So when looking at the top 10 billionaires at 505 billion, we can see that they are almost doubling the economy of Colombia. Now, Colombia may be a smaller country, but um, it is an exporter of oil and coffee, so it does have a lot of um, exports and services to offer, but it is still half of the um, wealth of just 10 people in the world. So just to put into perspective who we were just talking about, the 10 richest people in the world, I'm going to tell you who they are. Uh, number one is Jeff Bezos with a net worth of 112 billion at just age 54. He is the creator of Amazon. Uh, number two is Bill Gates with a net worth of 90 billion, who is the creator of Microsoft. Warren Buffett uh, with a net worth of 84 billion, who is the owner of Berkshire Hathaway, which is actually a holding company, and they own. Geico, Dairy Queen, Fruit of the Loom, Hellsberg Diamonds, um, and Pampered Chef, just to give a few examples. Number four is uh, Bernard Arnold, with a net worth of $72 billion. Um, he is the 
shareholder of LVMH, which stands for Moe Hennessy Louis Vuitton, um, which is a French multinational luxury goods conglomerate headquartered in France. Um, number five is Mark Zuckerberg with a net worth of $71 billion, just age 33. Um, many of us know him as the creator of Facebook. Number six is Amancio Ortega with a net worth of $70 billion. Um, he is the uh, chairperson of Zara, which is a clothing and accessories retailer. Uh, number seven is Carlos Slim Alu. Uh, his net worth is $67.1 billion. Uh, he's a Mexican businessman, engineer, investor, and philanthropist. Um, and he was actually the uh, richest man in the world from 2010 to 2013. Um, then he dropped to number seven. Uh, number eight and nine are Charles and David Koch of Koch Industries, uh, each with a net worth of $60 billion. Uh, Koch Industries um, is actually a variety of things. Uh, they do refining, chemicals and biofuels, fertilizers, polymers, uh, minerals, energy, glass, investments. So they do a lot of things. Uh, Larry Ellison, number 10. Uh, he has a net worth of $58.5 billion. Um, he is the creator of Oracle Corporation. Um, and what they do is develop and market uh, database software technology. So something you might have noticed is all the people that I just talked about were all men. Um, so of the top 50 richest people in the world, only five of them are women. Um, so, as you can see, we have an inequality between uh, civilians of one country, we have an inequality between uh, rich and poor countries, and then we also have uh, minority uh, inequalities and inequalities in with the gender pay gap. So there's plenty of inequality to go around. Uh, just to mention a few of these women, um, Alice Walton is actually the richest woman in the world. Uh, with a net worth of $46 billion, um, and she was uh, part of the Walmart Corporation. Uh, followed by uh, Frances Betancourt Myers at rank 18, um, Susan Clatton at rank 32, Jacqueline Mars at 34, and Yang Huion at rank 43. So we're just going to look, um, these pictures are a couple houses that are uh, around the world. You know, we can see um, what these billionaires spend their money on, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on their houses. Um, and then we can look at these and then look at the comparison of where the other end of this inequality is living. Um, nearly a half of the world's population currently lives on less than $2.50 a day, and more than 1.3 billion people live in extreme poverty, which is less than $1.25 a day. Um, some examples of things that are happening due to poverty. Um, according to UNICEF, uh, 22,000 children die every day due to the effects of poverty. 805 million people worldwide do not have enough food to eat. More than 750 million people lack adequate access to clean drinking water. In 2011, 165 million children under the age of 5 were stunted um, due to chronic malnutrition. That just means they have a reduced rate of growth and development. And preventable diseases like diarrhea and pneumonia take the lives of 2 million children a year who are too poor to afford proper treatment. What we're going to do now is have a little comparison between Lesotho and Finland, which, as we said earlier, are the two countries that have the highest and lowest Gini coefficients. And we're going to see if we can track a correlation between inequality and um, things that happen to the country. Um, so currently, uh, Lesotho is severely afflicted by HIV and AIDS, um, and the current prevalence is 23.6%. Uh, for the entire population, which is one of the highest in the world. Um, in urban areas, about 50% of women under age 40 have HIV. Um, the 2006 life expectancy was estimated to be 42 years old for men and women. 
and according to the UN, Lesotho has the highest rape rate of any country in the world um, at 91.6 per 100,000 people. Uh, now looking at Finland, uh, we can see that the um, effects are very different. So the life expectancy in 2012 was 84 years old for women and 78 years old for men. Uh, the current infant mortality rate in 2017 um, was 2.5 per 1,000 uh, births. And just to put something, a uh, number like that in perspective that many people might not know about, um, the current highest infant mortality rate in the world is in Afghanistan. Um, and it's about 110.6 per thousand live births. Uh, so a country like Finland actually has one of the lowest in the world at 2.5. Um, another thing, 99.99% uh, 99 of children under uh, two years of age are vaccinated against whooping cough and measles. And uh, another interesting fact is that the World Happiness Report of 2018 actually ranked Finland as the happiest place in the world to live. Um, okay, so now that we have seen um, just how bad this wealth gap is and um, the effects that it's having on the world, uh, we're going to look at kind of what caused it. So we currently don't really have a sound answer for what caused it. Uh, it's very complex between uh, economy and the government and education. Uh, we just currently don't have an answer of what actually caused it in the first place, but we are sure of what is uh, making it worse and continuing the wealth gap. Um, so um, a concept that we've been looking at is uh, wealth concentration, which is basically just a concept that people who have wealth will keep their wealth and continue to grow their wealth. So basically the rich just keep getting richer, and the reverse of that is that the poor are just getting poorer. Um, and then another effect of this wealth concentration is um, coming down to um, like through generations. So children that are born into a rich family uh, have an uh, advantage in basically all stages of life um, because of their money. So they're going to get a better education, they're going to have access to health care, access to better foods, so they have an advantage over someone who is born into a poor family who is living paycheck to paycheck and just making ends meet. Uh, you know, they're not going to have the same opportunities as somebody that's wealthy. Uh, a few other things that can be uh, causing this wealth gap, uh, rapid population growth, um, government policies, political instability, natural disasters, globalization. Uh, these are all things that are helping perpetuate the wealth gap, and they're not really helping um, helping anything right now. Um, some solutions to the wealth gap. Um, it's, it's a very complex uh, problem, but there are things that we can do to help it, uh, such as education and family planning, um, democracy, government policies, free trade, reducing corruption, attention to women, Improving agriculture in poor countries and foreign aid. Um, and then one last thought to leave you with. Um, it's been estimated that it would take $60 billion annually to end extreme global poverty. So that's what we were talking about prior as living on less than um, $1.25 a day. Um, and that $60 billion is actually less than a fourth of the income of the top 100 richest billionaires. Um, so just a fourth of 100 people's um, income could actually end extreme poverty. And that's just 100 people out of the over 7 billion people that are on this earth. So in conclusion, um, the wealth gap, um, it's not really it's not getting worse, but it's, it's really not getting better at a rate that the world would like to see. Um, and there's many things that we can do on a small scale to try to eliminate this gap. And uh, I encourage everyone to uh, read more about it and find out how you can get involved. Uh, thank you.